All right, folks, let's do the next round of notes. Um, so, so far, again, we've gone over molar ratios um, and how to get them from a balanced chemical equation. Uh, we're going to keep working with the same balanced equation just because it's a nice one and it's convenient. Uh, we then did some mole to mole conversions and mole to mass conversions. So now we need to move on to the last part of this page, uh, mass to mass conversions. Okay, so this is really similar to what we did before. Um, once again, the whole heart of this is this mole to mole conversion. That's what stoichiometry is all about. And all we're really doing is just continuously adding onto it. So um, let's dive right into this example and then we'll, we'll kind of go from there. Okay, so what mass of potassium phosphate, pardon me, it's a, got that, um, are needed to react completely or is needed probably that's bad grammar, we'll fix it. Okay, is needed to react completely um, with 15.4 uh, grams of magnesium sulfate. Okay, so going back to our chemical equation, it looks like we are starting with magnesium sulfate is um, one of the reactants. And we're trying to see how much potassium sulfate we need to completely react with that magnesium sulfate. So it looks like we are starting with grams and we are also going to grams because mass is grams. Okay, so oh, let me just erase. Uh, where did I leave that? Um, so uh, it's going to be kind of similar to these other problems, but we might just need more steps. At its heart, we know that we are going to need molar moles to moles. We're going to need to use a molar ratio. Um, so we're definitely going to need that. So the molar ratio. Um, between uh, potassium phosphate and magnesium sulfate is a two to three. So we'll keep that in mind. Um, if we're dealing with magnesium sulfate in grams, we need to convert that to moles. So let's start off our, our skeleton exactly the way we start off every other one. Whatever information is given to you in the problem is always a good place to start. Okay, so we're gonna need the molar mass of magnesium sulfate. Uh, I don't have that off the top of my head. So let's, uh, do a quick calculation. Let me get my uh, I got my calculator here, and I'm going to need my periodic table. Got to have these things handy, Drakkin. Come on, it's good for you all too, just to keep in mind. Always need a periodic table. Always need a calculator. Look at all that stuff written on there. Hoff Brinkle, love it. Okay, so magnesium sulfate is MgSO4, so Mg is 24.31. So. Uh, sulfur is 32.07, and then we're going to have four oxygens, so that's 120.38. So um, 120.38 grams of magnesium sulfate for every one mole of magnesium sulfate, okay? So this step right here, what we've just done is we have converted from grams of magnesium sulfate to moles of magnesium sulfate. And again, I know that we are gonna need to do this because we have to end up with moles to moles. We have to, we can't compare grams to grams. We have to compare moles to moles. Uh, let me find another pen here. There's my purple one. So this right here, what we've just done in this step, again, is grams of magnesium sulfate to moles of magnesium sulfate in that step right here. And that is a molar mass of magnesium sulfate and that whole step right here. Okay, so next step, um, we are looking for grams of potassium phosphate. Um, there's no way for me to get straight from moles of magnesium sulfate to moles or to, to grams of potassium phosphate, but I can get to moles. So this is our molar ratio. So again, back to our equation up here, for every three moles of magnesium sulfate, I will need two moles of potassium phosphate. Okay, so um, this right here is, oops, my pen is disappearing. <laughs> it's all good. This right here is uh, a molar ratio that we got from the balanced chemical equation. And then this step here is when we go from moles of magnesium sulfate to moles of potassium phosphate. Now, I'll, I'll mention this. You don't have to use skeletons for this. You can do each of these discrete steps. By discrete, I mean separate. Um, but I kind of think the skeleton method is just a better way to go overall. I think it's just easier in the long run. It takes a little while to figure it out, but once you get it, it just makes your life a lot easier. 
Okay, so moles of magnesium sulfate cancel out. All right, next step. Uh, we have now moles of potassium phosphate and we need to get to grams of potassium phosphate. So that sounds like a molar mass to me. And I don't have the molar mass of potassium phosphate either, so I better calculate it. Once again, periodic table, uh, we're gonna have, oh, let's clear that out. Uh, what is that? 39.10 times three plus phosphorus is 30.79 plus 16 times four, 212.27. So 212.27 grams of K3PO4 for every one mole of K3PO4. Okay, so for this one, we now, this is the molar mass of K3PO4. And in this step, we are converting from moles of potassium phosphate to grams of potassium phosphate. Okay. Um, our moles cancel out, moles of potassium phosphate cancel out. And so now we just have to do the last bit of math. Um, I think I ran out of space on this side. So again, I'm going to put the answer off to the side here. It's kind of weird, but we'll do it anyway. Um, so it looks like we've got that 212 thing. It's going to be times two divided by three divided by 120.38 times 15.4. Oops. Yep. I think that looks good. So there we go. And that's going to be 18.10 grams of potassium phosphate. Hold on, I got the lights back on. There we are. Okay, and that is our final answer. Seems reasonable to me. I would believe that answer. Okay, so with that in mind, that's a good example. Here is the deal. This is going to get confusing. When students start learning about all of this stoichiometry type calculations, everyone automatically assumes that you always need all of these steps. You always have to go from grams to grams, but that's not always true. The key here is grams are what's easy for us to measure. So very frequently when we're doing labs, we are dealing with grams because we can't measure moles. It's not possible, but we can measure grams and convert to moles. A lot of the problems that you're gonna see don't involve like gram to gram calculations. They might be gram to mole or mole to mole, uh, or sorry, gram to mole or mole to mole. Um, and it really just depends on what the question is asking and that will determine how many steps you need to take. Um, students automatically think that all problems must be difficult and that difficult means long. That's not always the case. So think really hard about what you're doing with each of these steps and how it works. Think about what the question is asking and you can always come back to these notes to double check. Um, again, the very heart of this problem is right here. This is the important part. And actually, let me circle that on all these problems. We'll use this orange one. This, this mole to mole is the most important step. Over here, it's right here. And here, and here, okay? So the molar ratio, that's the important part. All the other math that you're doing is just getting from grams into moles or out of moles into grams based on what the question is asking. But the important part is everything has to be in moles so that you can actually compare it. And again, the equation, this is the heart of things as well. This equation is what's most important, that it's balanced. A balanced chemical equation is where everything comes from. All right. So, this is the type of calculation we're gonna to continue to do from now on. Um, every time I introduce a new unit, um, except for unit seven, but all the other units are gonna involve this kind of math at some point. Um, it's very important. Stoichiometry is super, super, super important. Um, so let's take a look at our unit packet and we'll see what shows up in there. Okay, so you all have already done page one at this point the molar ratios, uh, page two and page three should also be pretty doable. And now we're moving on to page uh, four. Also, you should have been able to do and now we're on page five. So page five gives you these nice examples. So let's go through, uh, we'll finish this one off and we'll go from there. Okay, so um, here is our balanced chemical equation. Once again, this is the most important part. 
So how many grams of oxygen, that's what we're looking for, will be formed from uh, 3.76 grams of potassium uh, chlorate? So thinking about this problem, we are starting with grams, we're ending with grams. We're gonna need to convert from grams into moles and then from moles, uh, from gram, for, sorry, from grams of potassium chlorate to moles of potassium chlorate, from moles of potassium chlorate to moles of oxygen, and then from moles of oxygen to grams of oxygen. So it's really three separate problems, but we're just smooshing them all together to make it easier on ourselves. So this problem already has got it started for us. Um, this is the molar mass of potassium chlorate. So we can use grams to moles. So that cancels out. The next step is converting from moles of potassium chlorate to moles of oxygen. You have to have moles, otherwise this doesn't work. Um, that's how we get from between two different species in the same reaction. This looks like for every two moles of potassium chlorate, you're going to produce three moles of oxygen. Okay. So that's the moles of potassium chlorate are going to cancel out. And now we just need to go, we've got moles of potassium oxa, or, or of uh, oxygen. We need grams, so we need to convert from grams to moles. Um, for every one mole of oxygen, it weighs 32 grams. How did I know that? Well, the molar mass of oxygen is 16. And I've just memorized it. And I know that 16 times two, because that two there is 32. So not the hardest thing in the world. Okay, moles of oxygen cancel. And now we've got grams. So let's just do the math here. That's going to be um, 3.76 uh, divided by 122.55 times three divided by two times 32. And we end up with 1.47. Sounds good to me. 1.47 grams of oxygen. Okay, so um, this is a nice sheet, a, a nice worksheet because it just gives you this kind of framework and guideline to figure out these kinds of problems. So you just have to practice filling them in. Um, I will let you guys try number 11 and we'll do number 12 together. So in this case, we've got how many grams of KCl, that's what we're going for, will be formed from 2.37 grams of potassium chlorate. So the problem has already started us off here and we know what we're solving for. Um, so it looks like we're gonna need to do a few things. We're gonna need to convert from grams of potassium chlorate to moles of potassium chlorate. We're gonna need to uh, convert from moles of potassium chlorate to moles of potassium chloride. And then finally, moles of potassium chloride into uh, grams of potassium chloride. So let's get started. Um, what is the molar mass of potassium chlorate? Uh, oh, it's given to us right up here. We don't need to calculate it. We can just borrow it. I love it when that happens. Okay, so that's grams. Uh, let me switch. I'll grab the pen. Would you? Would you? Those units cancel, so that's great. Now, moles of potassium chlorate to chloride. Let's go back up to the equation. It looks like it's a two to two uh, reaction. So it's like the same thing as one mole. But I'll write, I'll just write it exactly as I see it. Okay, so for every two moles of potassium chlorate, you end up with two moles of potassium chloride. That cancels out. I'm gonna say that two also cancels out because there's a two over a two. It's the same thing as a one over one. And now we just need to get into the molar mass, uh, converting moles of potassium chloride into moles of potassium or grams of potassium chloride using molar mass. Um, I don't know what that is, but let's just add it up real quick. Uh, chlorine is 35.45. Potassium, I think it's like what, 39.1. So that's going to be 74.55 grams of potassium chloride. Uh, moles over here cancel out, moles of potassium chloride, and we're left with grams of potassium chloride. So now we just need to do the math. I'm just going to run this through my calculator real quick. Um, I'm doing uh, 12, uh, 2.73 uh, divided by 122.5 um, times uh, 74.55. Yeah, that looks good. Uh, and it looks like 1.66 is grams of potassium chloride is the answer. Also totally reasonable. <laughs> It makes sense that however many grams of potassium chlorate we'd start off with, there should be less grams of potassium chloride, being that they're in the same molar ratio, and it would have lost some mass to whatever oxygen was released. So 
there we go. There's some examples. Um, and um, yeah, we are probably going to continue to go over this in class. This is a little tricky. Um, some of you are going to get this right away. Some of you are going to take a little time. So what I think I'll do is I'll leave the rest of these um, blank for right now, and maybe we'll go over some more of them um, in class at some point. Uh, we can work on some of these together. At this point, you should be able to make a good stab at page five. And also, I believe page six. Yes, also page six. Okay, so page six also, we've got a balanced chemical equation, a couple of them, and you should be able to do, oh, number three over here is unbalanced. So you have to make sure you balance that first. Um, and we'll move on to page uh, seven and the rest of them all um, in our next set of notes. Um, while I'm here, let me hop into YouTube and let's see if I have any particular videos that might be helpful. This might change by the time you see it. It might look, not look identical. I'm recording these um, considerably a bit ahead of time. Okay. So uh, we've got these stoichiometry videos here that could be very helpful. Um, oh, that one's deleted. I guess I have to get rid of that one. Um, yeah, these ones can be really helpful. This converting units with multiple conversion factors, it's sort of, rel it's not directly relevant, but it's this idea of using a skeleton and adding lots and lots of things at the same time. So if you're kind of struggling with how we're setting up um, the skeletons, these two videos could be helpful. Um, I'm going to see if I can find some more, I'll, I'll add some more stuff to the section. Anyway, uh, let's stop there and we'll talk more about chemistry in our next video. Thanks, y'all.